revolutionary ferment. There are three stages of ferment that drive that organization, right? I spoke about. The first is the exploration, which gives you the mandate to go and look around to see if there is a possibility of extraction. The exploration will tell you that, yes, of course, there is a mineral deposit there. What it does is that it gives you another opportunity to go ahead to look for what we call a mining list. The mining list gives you the permission, of course, to go and do some level of digging. From the mining list, you come to what we call the digging permit, which gives you the final authorization to go and do your development in terms of mining. And so if you have not gotten any of this, and you are found working in the field, of course, it's an illegal. Working in concession means that you will be working within a defined area. And these defined areas, most of them are plotted on pieces of paper. What happens most of the case is that somebody is given a concession to work in coordinates A, B, and C. But that person is found to be working in coordinates Z, Y, and T. It is an illegal. In terms of the small scale working in the applications of mercury, Ghana has signed to the Manaraka Convention which means that we must be able to take ourselves away from the application of mercury. If you are engaging in a small-scale mining and you are found doing this, it is an illegality. Under the rules of the game, small-scale concessions are not to extend beyond 25 acres. In Ghana today, we realize several concessions have been commingled together, and we have our good friends, the Chinese, working in those concessions as large-scale men. It is an illegality. If you are a small scale, you are confined within 25 acres of land to work within. If a small scale miner is found working outside these 25, 50, 57, which happens in most of the concession areas, it is an illegality. There is a development recently that they call tributary system, where a large scale company which means people who own between 25 and above get the concession from government, and all they do is that they go and pick foreigners, Chinese, Ukrainian, all over, Indians, and they begin to sell those portions to those individuals. It is an illegality. So all these chains of activities is what we are describing as an illegality. As a government, we are not anti-mining. We are not against mining. But the methodology and approach engaged in the thinking activity is what we are against. And so you will agree that through the president, about four months ago, somewhere in April 2nd, we have put a moratorium on issuance of new licenses. What that means is that we as a government have not granted any authorization right which was supposed to be granted from the president through me to any person. So authorization to mine, authorization to prospect has not been given up, even taking permits. So we put a moratorium on that. We have further suspended all small-scale mining activities. What that means is that all people mining under 25 acres of land, their activity has been suspended. But the trick is that, as I've stated earlier on, some individuals have already commingled a number of small scales. A, B, and C comes from a small scale license. They go together and put those three concessions, making 75 acres, which of course mandated to become a large scale mine. That is an illegality. And so the suspension is on this. <laughs>
uh, for members of parliament there on the, on the floor of parliament. Speaking there will be the Speaker of Parliament. Now, this group is IDRIG. They are organizing an exhibition there for members of parliament. Let's go there live. Knowledge. Distinguished lovers of parliament, otherwise you will not be here, I suppose. It's painful to recount that if you go to our library today, now now, from here, the books are on the floor. It's a painful truth, but it's true. Library, are you here? <laughs> it's true. Painful to recount. If some journalists will raise money for parliament immediately in a week, it will be a good national duty to find the books, the research material, and put them there. I love to always say that when parliament sits, the whole Ghana has sat. And that is why you have a library like the Library of Congress in the US. And when you go to India, and you go on a tour of parliament, you have known the history of India from beginning to the end, as you simply tour Parliament. Because Parliament is India, and India is Parliament. In Parliament, there must be a symbiotic relationship between people and representatives. Very often, the people don't even understand Parliament. No wonder sometimes they say so much on truths about members of Parliament. They don't know what they do. Through no fault of either MPs or people, but because our information analysis and distribution is very poor. The people must understand parliament, and the people must, the parliament must also understand the people. Otherwise, you cannot represent people whose hopes and aspirations you are oblivious of. And that requires information, analytical, well-researched information. And this is a step in that direction, which is, in fact, a very, very important step. But it's only a step. And we must not clap for ourselves before the music really reaches the climax. The Research and Information Week is therefore very crucial as it gears towards exposing members of parliament, staff, and others within the parliamentary service to the public and vice versa. We hope, and I trust all Ghanaians hope, that through the activities lined up to commemorate the research information we members as well as the public will appreciate the structures and functions of hydric and in appreciating the structures and functions i believe this will help to improve our knowledge including everyone of us of the essence of research and information management particularly in this era of knowledge based economy, and society generally. Distinguished visitors, friends, participants, members of the media, we often say that, as the media men say, that facts are secret, comment is free. Unfortunately, in our country, we often see a situation where facts are free and are for comment they are scandalous. <laughs> and it's because we don't have data. And sometimes you don't even care to find data. In fact, you can produce in the United States the Bible that Washington used to be sworn in as president of the United States. Where is Kwame Nkrumah? If you ask this, 
will all begin to run in circles. I'm trying to let us know how, how far behind we are so that we will really work hard at something. We can't find it. Maybe even that which the, the president of the fourth republic, the first president of the fourth republic used, Fly the Reverend Gary John Rawlings, we may not even find that one. I'm not sure. It will be good if we do find it. Very often we hear that, and this is why parliament is so crucial, because it is this, the hub of the nation, actually. From archaeology to zoology, our everything should be parliament. If we talk about the history, for example, you'll find it being said that Kwame Nkrumah declared independence at the old polo ground, and that his opponents opposed it. It is, it is just not true and correct. It was the Duchess of Kent who declared independence in Parliament House, right inside Parliament House. And the Queen Elizabeth sent her to do that, just that on the day of independence, 6 March 1957. Some forget that Polo Ground event was, was the day before the 6th of March and that it was a political program, not an official declaration. In fact, if our late honored first president had dared to do that, the police would have arrested him. That would have been UDI ala Ian Smith. And it would have been illegal. Unfortunately, Ghanaian children have been taught this, that Kwame Nkrumah declared independence at all polo ground. And that the opposition didn't want it, so they were not there. When it was a CPP rally, how could they be there? <laughs> and then we mix truth with facts, and it's pathetic. We don't have record. It's painful. And how many know that it was Busia who seconded the motion for independence? Six months. 1957. And we see, therefore, that if we play with Parliament and the truth and facts and data concerning Parliament, then we are playing with our whole nation. Such things can only be tragic and sad. And it is by the records of Parliament that someday we will know the wonderful contributions of men like Erondo Furiata, J.B. Dankwa, and so many others, both sides of the house, CPP and uh, uh, UP or, and others, which are really inspiring. And I would like to recommend that from the speaker to the clerk, we should never cease learning and researching. I remember not long ago, we had for the first time a half motion bill. It had never taken place in our, in our parliament, in our history. And I was going to preside over it. I did not refuse to admit it because it was proper in the circumstances. I asked for a day to go and do my research. And I said, research from the UK to India and others. The following morning, I came and gave directives accepted by both sides of the house, and we made progress. But we must learn. And if we don't, do we want to build our republic with ignorance, which is an anathema in the present developing world? And for that matter, I would like to charge those in charge of this uh, department that you are not only members of parliament, but the, pub the public today, and Ghanaians even yet unborn, a duty to do a work worth doing for the people of Ghana. Distinguished participants, my speech will be available later. I'm only speaking to it at the moment, and I will conclude in a moment. 
because we live in an era where we cannot ignore this great development. And I trust that someday the Ghana parliament will also have a, a parliament library and information center that people will even travel from other countries to learn in. If you go to the British Parliament Library, you will find a copy of the Bond of 1844. I have been there, so I can tell you for sure. Will you find, where will you find it in Ghana? A number of matters of public interest, which I could not find in the National Archives, I went and found in the library of the School of Oriental and African Studies in London University. In fact, we are so far behind that we should take today like a crusade so that we don't start to cry, cry for ourselves before the music is actually half the way. And I want to challenge you, therefore, that you must be really prepared to do something for our country. For those who have assisted us today, I can only join hands with other Ghanaians here to say thank you to you. But actually, it is just the beginning of many good things that we hope should happen to us. Let us be determined and let us do something for our nation and for posterity. Parliament is the nerve center of the nation. Everybody seated here has a representative inside parliament. And so has every Ghanaian everywhere. And I'm therefore glad to have this opportunity to be part of this process and today's event. And to declare the Research and Information Week of IDRIG duly launched. God help us. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And now for the unveiling of the logo for the IDRIG Week. Mr. Speaker, with the help of those on the high table, will unveil the logo for the celebration. May I please invite the representatives of the British High Commission to come up and help Mr. Speaker to, to do that, as well as, of course, um, Dr. Pia and his people to come up and help us to unveil the logo. That's it. So it's a logo that is on a pull-up. It's going to be pulled up and then subsequently put on the floor for all of us to see. Mr. Speaker is being assisted by the young men from the Ivory Group to do that. So, Mr. Speaker, will pull up the <laughs> the logo. I see Mustafa trying to pull up the logo, <laughs> and I keep telling him that. Uh, <laughs> and there you have it. A big round of applause for. It goes up and up and up and up and up. So that is our logo for this week's celebration. You can see the theme. You can see the departments that form part of the IDRI group. And of course, Westminster Foundation on it.
So that was the Speaker of Parliament, Reverend Professor Aaron Michael Quay, speaking at the launch of that exhibition and seminar uh, organized by the Inter.